Hi everybody, Deborah Lynn here. If you're new, welcome, and if you've been here before, welcome back. Lately, I've been playing around with these dry flowers. They're roses that I've, I've had a, a few different batches of roses and I've been saving them and letting them dry. And what's really cool about saving your flowers is that they turn different colors and I liked the moodiness of the colors. They get a little bit more dusty and muted. I'm so used to painting in very, very vibrant colors that right now, because these flowers have been staring at me for weeks now, because I keep replenishing them with fresh ones and then, the, then they die off, and I've gone through a, a few batches like that, and I really, I really been intrigued by the color change of the flowers. So when you get your flowers, really truly study them, enjoy them, watch how their colors change, be inspired by that. Um, sometimes we just we get flowers and oh they're just a pretty bouquet of flowers, and we really don't truly take the time to really enjoy them. So that's what I was doing. That's where this inspiration came from. The tops of these flowers, do they really look like roses? Mm, yes and no. I didn't put much detail in them because I was liking what was happening. When that green, when I put that green down and it just whooshed right into the water on the page where I put down the preliminary water shape. I didn't really want to disturb that much. I thought it looked really beautiful. And that's where I always say that watercolor can be so enjoyable or it can be torturous, okay? I prefer to work on the enjoyable side. And to me, that means that I allow that water and that pigment to take me on a journey instead of me forcing and manipulating the water to do and the pigment to do what I want it to do. So that's what's happening in this painting. Now, the leaves, those are those have a little bit more of a rose feel to them. I didn't put in the extra details in them. I kept them a little bit uh, a little bit abstract because we we're really not sure what kind of leaf this is. We're really not sure what kind of flower head this is. I'm inspired by roses. But do they really look like roses? Probably not. But it doesn't matter. Um, the end results was a very, very beautiful, um, soft, serene um, uh, palette here. Now, I think I used a mixture of, I'm going back in memory here. Um, I used, cat. no, I undersea green and um, olive green and I believe there was uh, Quinn, uh, Quinn Lilac and Quinacridum uh, Quinn Gold. I think those were the colors that I used in this. I, I didn't I didn't know I was really going to put this into editing, so therefore I didn't really write everything down. So I'm just kind of going from memory. Um, so that's those are kind of the colors. And as you can see, that undersea green right there, now I'm intensifying the green just a little bit because it kind of just dried kind of gray green kind of color wasn't really attractive so i needed to brighten it up a little bit so i'm doing another green wash over the top of it 
So because that leaf area was dry, I was able to go back in and then add more color. And now I am going in and I'm just adding depth. So that way I'm just adding a little bit more heavier um, consistency of the green. And now I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna bump edges. And I'm just gonna do this just in a few areas. I'm not gonna loosen up this painting too much with the bumping of edges. I just want a little bit because I want it to, and I wanna do a little bit of um, splashing around here also because when somebody looks at my painting, I want them to immediately know I'm looking at a watercolor. Sometimes you can look at a watercolor and you don't know if it's a watercolor, if it's gouache or whatever it is. You're, you're, you have to look at it and study it. Um, I want them to immediately know that they're looking at a watercolor. And you can do that by doing these splash effects or by doing the bumping of the edges and loosening that pigment and letting it flow. And that's what I love about um, loose water coloring is it's just the flow and the beauty of it. It's just, to me, I've worked in some of the other mediums and nothing, nothing to me anyway can compare. I know oils are fabulous. Um, I have a little hard time. I keep trying the acrylic and I will continue to try the acrylic. Um, but it seems like every time I do it, I walk away and say, why? Why did I just torture myself with that stuff? Because it's like pushing glue around. Um, so I guess when you get so used to um, one medium, it's hard to go to another. I really would like to, to eventually, not now, I'm really, really set in really exploring and having fun with watercolor. But eventually, I think I would like to try some oil paintings. Um, I think it would be fun to do that. I think I would really enjoy it. So here I'm doing something that I've been bringing into the body of my work lately. And that has been where I kind of stitch or sew um, my petals and leaves together. It kind of gives it a little bit of a mysterious feel. It almost, uh, I, I almost spider webby. You know what I mean? Like the stuff that you would see in the flowers in the morning. Sometimes you'd see the dew on the flowers, but you'd also see the the webs and stuff. So that's that's what's happening here. Um, so. I like bringing that little bit of mystery and uniqueness to my art. I like to bring textures into my art. Um, I like things to be extremely bold sometimes in color. And like times right now, I really back off and I go with a lot softer palette. And I've noticed by switching from the Magello mission gold paints to working predominantly into like daniel smith there's an extreme difference um more subtle paintings are happening with the daniel smith and the colors are a bit more muted of course and when i work in the magello I get the most vibrant, bold, beautiful, strong paintings. Um, so I, I love both of those lines. I love other lines also. Um, but those are my two main lines that I really like. I also like um, the dust colors that you can get from Van Gogh. Um, so there's other things that I can use. Um, I have a lot of a lot of stuff in my um, supplies in storage, and um, boy, I wish I had my hands on it because then I would have acrylic inks and Bombay inks, and I have all that stuff. But it's uh, I I don't want to have it transported 
via mail to me because I'm so worried that the stuff would break open. It would just be a disaster. So I'm just doing without. Um, but in the meantime, but I'm still having an enjoyable time with the watercolors that I do have. Um, so I am, am I'm building this. Uh, I call them the lovers. I these two. You know, usually they always say, you know, if you're gonna paint or draw. Um, you know, do do it, you know, do it in like threes or fives or, you know, do it in odd numbers versus even numbers. And uh, I just did too. And I think they're effective. And I, I think the interest of tying them together and sewing them together created that union of almost one so the two have become one here um so you'll have to let me know what you think of this piece um here i'm playing around with the leaf i, I was thinking maybe do i add here i'm playing i'm thinking do i add one more stem somewhere you know because i'm thinking oh i only have two here do i need three so sometimes less is more and i always try to tell everybody that I'm teaching in my group um, less is more pull back um, white spaces always when you guys are painting always keep that in mind it's so important while you're painting to remind yourself to retain some of those white spaces because they really are essential to bringing light into your painting if you just um what do I want to say if you if you just close everything in uh, the painting becomes very confined and busy and it's almost like you feel like it's being choked. So keep that in mind. Just really try to um, keep the light in your art. And that means by, by uh, retaining some of the white. Or sometimes you can bring white in with um, white paint. So that's another option. Um, but sometimes you can go too far with that and then even putting white paint on it is not gonna help. So just always keep that in mind. Try to retain your white spaces. Now in the very end, I do go back in here and I add a little bit of lilac um, and uh, I, I splattered a little bit in, but then I go back in at the very end and I add some bigger um, splashes of it because I just felt like it needed another unique color. And I like to kind of set off my paintings with something like that sometimes when they're so subtle like this. Um, that one or two little extra bumps of something. I did put some really strong aqua in the stems there. You really don't see it much. It, it, it shines through a little bit. Um, but unless I told you, you probably wouldn't even see it. But um, that lilac that I put in there um, by Daniel Smith, that, that that does set the painting and gives it a, um, a unique um, extra color. So it looks like I'm not, I'm not in my mind, I still need to bump things up enough, en en enough. So what's happening is the painting is starting to dry and it's starting to tell me I'm still too weak. I still need more depth. I need another layer of color. So this is where I'm going in and I'm just adding some depth um, to, the, to the piece so there is some dramatic color going on. I don't want it to be so weak that it's just insipid and it's just, you know, there's nothing joyous to look at. It's just 
it's like a one layer um, or two layer painting. It's just not enough. Sometimes we need to really keep layering and layering. So if you've done a painting and you only have done one layer, I can tell you right now you haven't done enough. And I know when you're first starting, um, and I, I did it myself, you know, I would paint something and say, oh, this is pretty. It was, it was pretty, but it, it wasn't enough. And I remember people in groups were saying, keep going, keep going. You're not done yet. Keep going. And I didn't quite understand what they were saying. But now as I've matured as an artist, I understand that you really do need to keep going with your art. And if somebody tells you to keep going, they, they really mean, go ahead, keep going, keep put more, get, get more paint on there. Um, you need to create more depth and you need to add and intensify your color and you need to create your values. And um, so all that comes into play as there, I'm putting in that aqua, I believe right there. Um, so that all, you know, as you evolve um, with your painting journey, you learn how to do all these things. Uh, like I said, I started off, when I first started off, you know, I was just doing one layer paintings. Um, and uh, you slowly learn how to add more and more. And there's nothing wrong. There's still beauty in just having a painting that's one layer, but it is thin and um, it's not finished. Put it to the side and when eventually you can go back to them and build upon them even more as you become more seasoned. So what am I doing here? I'm playing around with this puddle. Why, why am I doing that? See, I'm in this, I'm in the fiddling mode where I want to just play around. I don't want to stop. I know the painting is almost done and I'm having fun and I don't want to stop. So I find myself playing around and that's when things can get real sketchy and things can go wrong real fast. So a lot of times that's when we need to just tell ourselves, stop it and put it everything down and actually walk away from the painting and walk out of the room. Otherwise we kill it. And I almost killed it here with all these little splatters. I was just being silly and pushing it too far. Um, I think I, I, I was, I didn't go too far, but I was close. So, Here's my painting. You guys stay safe out there. Stay well and God bless.